Welcome to ER Docs and Crucial Talks. This is Cullen. I wanted to introduce our special guest on this episode, a gentleman by the name of Greg Fleming. Greg is an amazing young man who grew up in the Cabrini Green Housing Projects of Chicago. The Cabrini Green Housing Projects was one of the largest projects in the country and was unfortunately notorious for gangs, violence, drug use, and extreme poverty. In this episode, we talk about how Greg overcame great odds to become a very successful and in fact, the youngest ever high school head coach, basketball coach uh, of Chicago Public Schools. Here he, not only does he teach young men how to win ball games, he also teaches them how to win a life. Greg utilized throughout his life uh, mentorship, and now he is providing that to other young men. In this episode, we talk about some heavy subjects, including how Greg overcame the death of his brother due to gun violence. This was a dark time in his life, and he talks all about it. We found Greg to be very inspiring, and we'd like to have him back on for a Q&A. So if you have any questions for Greg, please reach out and email us at info at erdocscrucialtalks.com. We'll put a link in the show notes, and please enjoy this amazing episode. Thank you. This is our disclaimer. The statements made and opinions expressed during this podcast are our own personal statements and opinions and should not be construed as those of any entity or institution that we may have been employed by or affiliated with at any time in our professional lives. Additionally, we take patient confidentiality incredibly seriously. For that reason, any reference to stories about patients have purposely been modified so as to not identify any particular patient or location. Finally, while we are both doctors, nothing that we say in this podcast should be construed as medical advice. If you are in need of medical advice, please contact your personal physician. Remember that although we are doctors, we are not your doctors. Thank you. <laughs> What's hey. up, man? How you doing? Good, man. How you doing? Wow. Welcome to ER Docs and Crucial Talks. Yeah. Uh, my name is Cullen. And I'm Raj. And, and tonight we got two amazing guests. Uh, but before we get into it, Cullen, how you doing, man? How's your, how's your week, man? Uh, it's been pretty busy, but uh, now I've got two days off, so I'm pretty excited about that. Very nice. I just finished a couple 24 hours this week and then a 12 in between, and I'm beat, man. Doing two 24s in a week is is tiring, but mm -hmm. uh, I've been looking forward to today. We've been coordinating yeah, this for too. a long time, right? I want yeah. to have you go ahead and introduce our first guest, Cullen. So our first guest is uh, Deepak, who some of you who have listened for a while may know he's done a one podcast with us before, but he's my best friend. We're basically like brothers. Um, and we've been friends since first grade, really became best friends in high school. And the topic of this conversation is about mentorship. And I think that uh, Deepak and I have both mentored each other throughout our lives. Uh, we've traveled to, I think something like 20 something countries together. 32. We've just been, 32? All right. <laughs> anyway. With uh, with no further ado, please welcome Deepak. Welcome, hey, Deepak. Guys, how are you? The audience it's demanded been a while you. Since I've been back, but uh, you know what? It's I heard that you guys got up to four listeners, and I'm like, <laughs> four up in. my mom, my dad, Colin's mom. <laughs> we're hoping to invite Greg on here pretty soon for to be a listener. So, Deepak, uh, we're glad to have you, man. And uh, part of recruiting you back was to have you introduce us to a good friend of yours and someone I think that you would regard as a family member to you now, as I understand it from a couple articles I read about you guys that was very inspiring. And uh, without further ado on this end, who do we got tonight? Yeah, so, you know, this individual has an unbelievably special place in my heart. I, uh, we started our friendship in 2003 when he was in the fourth grade. Um, you know, it's one of those things where you talk about commitment and persistence. And I started a pro joined a program called Cabrini Connections in the city to mentor young um, elementary school kids that lived in the Cabrini Green. And I went to my first meeting and I was probably just as nervous as the 35 kids sitting in front of me. <laughs> and this little guy, I will never forget this to the day I die. He looks at me and he just has this big smiling grin and he points at, I want you to be my tutor. And that's how it all started. <laughs> I read that in the article that we'll, uh, we'll link to in, in the website that yeah. he like, just, so I would that... like to introduce, uh, it's true. hundred percent true. He looked at me straight up, said, I want to be, I want you to be my tutor. And that's how the friendship started. And, you know, quickly he just became absorbed into my family. 
I always say he's the oldest child and younger brother that I never had. So uh, without further ado, I want to introduce Greg Fleming. Jr. Hey, Greg. Welcome, Greg. How's it going? How's it going, man? I really appreciate y'all having me uh, on the podcast. It's great to have you, Greg. Um, we, as you know, we've we've waited a while to get you on, and uh, you're super busy in so many different endeavors in your life, and we want to pick your brain on oh. a lot of that. Uh, how much how much of what Deepak said is true, and how much of it is 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 smoke? <laughs> oh no, man, it's true, man. Um, yeah, man, 2003, I probably was in the fourth so grade. I, I wasn't. Yeah, I was in the fourth grade. I wasn't supposed to even be in that program. It was started at fifth grade and up. But uh, I was a bad kid in elementary school, and um, my mother made me go. And I didn't even want to go. So she's like, okay, you got to go to this. So she, it was, someone had recommended, you know, to her to send me to that program. And um, I think I ended up going, and I started. And I'm just like, they were like, okay. It was like a group of people uh, standing up. And they were like, okay, y'all can pick who y'all want to be y'all mentor, y'all tutor. Mm. And I just looked at him with a big smile on my face, like, I want you to be my mentor. And I think, like, a week later, he took me to the Woods game. <laughs> That's awesome. Why, 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 so, Deepak? What, what was the, what was the, what was the, what was the attraction? Honestly, man, I, I don't know to this day, man. I think, um, I just picked him, man. And, and, and I think God blessed me, man. I, it was, it was, it was, it was just a random, just, it was just random. It, it wasn't, He's tall. He looked nice. It was just I just picked a guy, and I'm just like I just pointed to him. Like I was the first one to like stand up, and I went directly to him, and uh, just pointed at him. And it was meant to be. That's cool. Now That's we today. Hey, yeah. tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, you know, where you're raised, uh, what you do uh, on the side, your side gigs professionally, all the, all of that. And Greg, before oh, you sure. start this, I'll just interject for one second, and uh, and you can cut this part out of the video or whatever. But you know, when you run that, I think like this, Greg, to me is the heart and soul of the podcast. So take your time to kind of explain like where the foundation of your life was, you know, where you how your mom and Cabrini, and then kind of like your evolution through the system, because I think this is a story just as much about being a product of the system and breaking through the mold of that, as it is about, you know, what you've achieved as a result of what you've gone through. Greg, does that bother you to be defined as a product of the system? Like, I don't want you to feel like we're defining you. I, I have no business defining you in any no, way. I, no, absolutely not, man. Because like I said, um, once again, like Brittany made me, man. Uh, I don't think I'll be the young man I am today if I didn't go through the stuff I went through. But uh, with that being said, my name is Gregory Fleming. Uh, I'm a junior. Um, I have a son that's the third. Um, I was born and raised in Cabrini Green, a uh, single mom who raised three boys. Um, my father wasn't really went around like that. Uh, we all had different dads. Uh, kind of grew up, you know, I did. I grew up in welfare. Mom, you know, grew up in welfare, lived in the projects uh, in Cabrini. Um, seen a lot of, you know, drug selling. Um, killings, um, friends getting killed, family members getting killed. Um, just, I, I, just, you know, just, I've seen a lot, seen it all. So, um, I mean, it, it, it's been a blessing for me to, you know, be able to, you know, meet a person like Deepak and um, kind of like, you know, take me you know, outside the environment and put me in a, a situation that, you know, to kind of be successful. Um, also, you know, I, I'm a teaching assistant with CPS. I'm the head basketball coach at my high school, Roberto Clemente, where, excuse me, where I graduated from. Um, I think that's a blessing. Also, a lot of people don't get to come back and coach at their high school. I think for me, that was a blessing. Uh, the school is behind me. The community is behind me. And uh, we plan on doing some, you know, some big things at that school, building it up to, to, to becoming a basketball program in the city. Uh, I'm the youngest head basketball varsity coach in Chicago right now. Um, wow. Yeah, and I, I mean, I got, I, I started a, a trucking company. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get Deepak to invest in it. Um, what? You're starting a trucking <laughs> but, uh, company? Start, yes, I started a trucking company. Uh, it's called Cabrini Elite Transportation. Um, 
I started back in 2020, yeah, last year, actually, uh, around like March. Um, I had a friend who kind of like introduced me to like the trucking company, the, 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 the trucking industry. And uh, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's something I definitely, you know, something I would love to invest in. Uh, it's a, it's a, a business that would never go out, you know. And uh, I'm right now. I'm in school. I'm in a process of right now getting my permit to get my CDL myself. That's cool. Kind of just learn the business more, you know, learning yeah. more. Um, um, yeah. So you got your eggs uh, in a lot of different baskets. I do, man. I mean, you can you can never you know, not make, you know, you, you want to, you want to have as much of, you know, income you can, you know, so, uh, and I'm married, I got three boys, you know, I got a little brother who, who depended on me, so I want to kind of, you know, when I leave, make sure they in the, in the situation, the best situation as possible. So Greg, uh, you, you talk about you're a family man, uh, married, three kids, you, you're, it sounds like you're close to your brother. Uh, did did you have that growing up? It sounds like you did. It sounds like you had a, a, almost what some would regard as like a like a fractured family. You had a, you had a mom, you had siblings, but no, the dad wasn't around. And and people need to know a little bit about what Cabrini is. I I grew up in Elmhurst, Illinois. I went to University of Illinois for undergrad. I and I was I, I went there, gosh, in like 1997 to 2000 when Cabrini was actually cleaning up. I mean, you know everything about it. Can you explain to the audience? Cabrini Green. What is it? It was in, it was featured in that movie Candyman. Maybe that's where some people know what what it's from. Can you talk about the the legacy of Cabrini and what wh why that was such a big deal? Uh yeah, man. It was it was a, a project. It was a CHA, uh, Chicago Housing Authority. Uh, probably one of the largest uh projects in, in the United States. Um, at the time, for me, born in ninety, you know, I was born in ninety four. Up until we moved. And they knocked it down in like 2012. Cabrini was probably like the worst projects in Chicago and in the United States at that time. But uh, it was a housing authority for you know low income you know families. Um, who, you know, CHA provided housing for. Um, it was a gold mine. The area where it was at, it was literally like eight blocks from downtown, um, like the near north area, and. Um, yeah, man, it's no longer there now. Uh, we have a piece, uh, a land that's still there, the row houses that we call it. But um, yeah, all of it's gone now. The whole area is gentrified. You, I, yeah, I remember driving past Cabrini recently. There's these multi-million dollar properties. There's like infinity and car, ex, ex, you know, luxury car dealerships. Um, what when you were when you were growing up in Cabrini, you mentioned some things that you that you kind of blitzed by, but they to me they sound really profound. You'd seen people killed, you'd seen people sell drugs, use drugs, and here you are, this very successful individual. Tell me about some of those experiences, not you know in in any gory detail about the experience, but what's it like to to see people that you care about, friends, you know, killed, murdered, uh, and anybody close to you that ever got killed? Yes, um, it was. It, it was it was crazy, man. Uh, honestly, man. Like, I think that saying you you a you a uh, what, what's the saying? Uh, your product of your environment. I think that's that's true, man. Um, it, just seeing it, man. It, I kind of got numb to it, you know. At, at by the time I was ten years old, because I seen it so much, so it became a norm for you know the kids in Cabrini at my age at the time. Um, seeing the, the 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 shootings and um, seeing the the drug selling and the you know just seeing that type of stuff. Um, I think if you wasn't motivated and had the will to want to be better, it was gonna snatch you and get you. And I think for me, um, seeing that and me and be, me being able to you know see different outside of Cabrini, I think that's what kept me motivated to 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 be different and, and, and want more. You know. Um, that lifestyle. You, you you had mentioned in one of the articles that we're going to showcase on the website that you lost a brother to gun violence. Yeah. How old were you when yes. that happened? Uh, uh, my brother, so it was, it's three boys. My mom had three boys. I'm the oldest. Uh, my younger brother, I mean, my middle brother, Alex, who is the, the one that is deceased. And then we have a younger brother uh, who's 
for 13 now. He's getting ready to come to high school. Mm-hmm. He's actually going to become playing, but he'll be coming to play for me next year. That's cool. He's like one of the top eighth yeah, one of the top eighth graders in the state right now. Um, we lost Alex in 2015. Um, I was a sophomore in college, um, but going into my sophomore year, I think mm-hmm. he was 18. I was 19. Um, a year, uh, a year older than him. But um, yeah, man, it was crazy, man. Um, to lose someone that close, man. I, I never in a million years picture, you know, me losing my little brother to gun violence to the streets. You know, that was um, a big turning point in Greg's life. It was, man, because I was at a point in my life where, like, I didn't even want to go play basketball no more. I didn't want to go to college no more. Um, did you blame uh, anybody, I, it, or it, did you blame anything for that? You know, did you have any? Deep-seated anger, sadness. Can you t- can you walk us through that a little bit? I don't want to get into anything that's going to be hurtful, but it's it's a kind of it's such no, a no, definitely. No, I I don't really think I blame no one at the time. I th- uh, I did. I think I blame my mom at the time, and I blamed him because um I kind of like you know you know told my mom like it's fifty percent your fault, fifty percent his fault because um you 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 we lived in this one jungle which was Cabrini Green. And then you move us to the west side of Chicago um, at that time, which that block was like one of the craziest blocks on the west side at the time. So we got, you know, exposed to the same thing, which probably even worse now because people from the projects were moving all over the city. So, um, yeah, I kind of like I kind of like blame turn him for a little bit. But, um, yeah, man, it was it was crazy, man. It It, it put me. It put me back definitely for like two years, man. I had to, um, I kind of got depressed um, and just, you know, like I was mad. I wanted to do stuff that, you know, that I, I know I was going to regret. Um, it was just, it was my, my mind was all over the place, you know, and at that time, nobody can tell me nothing, you know, because, you know, people who haven't lost a brother or sister didn't understand how I felt at the time. So it was for me, it was, you know, what you gonna do? You either gonna move on from this and, and keep going, or you gonna let this hold you back and do something um, that you're gonna regret, and now you're another statistic. So I always kept that in, in the back of my head that I didn't want to be a statistic. So um, I end up, you know, getting past it, you know, taking one day at a time and kind of, kind of going from there. Was it a thing where over time you just kind of came into that depression or was there a turning point or something that happened? You said, you know, that's enough. Right. I'm going to get back to being Greg, you know? Oh uh, yeah, man. I, I end up, I end up taking a semester off from school. Um, and like I said, I, I end up getting canceling. And then like my son, like uh, one day just, you know, I had my son at the time. And I'm just, you know, I look, look at him, in, you know, I'm holding him, looking at him in his eyes, and I'm just like, I, I, I don't want another man to raise my son, so I, I gotta be here. Mm-hmm. I gotta be here. I can't be in jail. I can't be dead. I gotta be here to raise my son. I got to. So I end up, they end up giving me my, my coaching, and giving me my scholarship back, and I went back to school. And uh, like I said, I took one day at a time, and kind of stayed away. I stayed away from Chicago. Uh, the, the three years that I was still in school. It just kind of stayed away, didn't really come visit the city like that, didn't really come visit my family. And I think that kind of like uh, helped me get back focused. Greg, was there, was there, I hate to use this term, it's so cliche, but was there peer pressure? Friends of yours, people that lived, ne- you know, around you, were, were they sort of criticizing you for not being just a part of, you know, their world, their system? And seeing you kind of just, you know, diverge from what they would have expected you to do, which, you know, what you even said, I, I would have done stuff I regretted. I would have become another statistic. How, how would, how would, how did, how did you break out of that? How, and, and did they pressure you in any way? Oh, no, that's the crazy thing about it, man. I'm like, when people hear my name, Greg and Cabrini, they, oh, the basketball player, the baseball player, the athlete, mm-hmm. you know, Greg, a good guy. So, no, really, people really, like, look, Greg, don't worry about it. We got it. We're going to take care of it. And I'm just like, you know, like, mm-hmm. do I suppose to say no? Do I suppose to say, yeah, y'all better do something about it, you know, to my brother friends? 
But uh, no one really like you know like man, you gotta come do something. You you gotta go catch somebody for your you know nobody mm-hmm. really um uh, you know peer pressure me to doing any of that and uh because that that wasn't me. I wasn't that type of a person. So people understood that like look, Greg, just continue to go play ball, go back to school, and we got this. Or it's gonna you know God got this. You know so. Uh, and I thought I thought that was strange, you know, because they like, you know, I'm his big brother, you know, we had a, a real good relationship. So I definitely was expecting people like, man, if you don't do nothing, you 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 soft or, you know, you ain't this, you know. So, but I I got the the total opposite, total opposite. That's fascinating. It sounds like they respected your character, and regardless of what the environment was. Greg, you mentioned that your mom, you know, at, at times you'd blame your mom. And I totally understand what you're saying. She brought you out of Cabrini, which was obviously war-torn and challenged, into the West Side at the time, which was similar. What, what were the positive parts about your mom and, you know, the, this woman that raised you and supported you? What were some of the positive things you got out of that relationship? Um, I mean, she, she, my mother, man, we have a strange relationship still to this day. Um, I love my mom. Um, I think she just didn't know any better. I think from, you know, I studied psychology in school, in college. So it kind of like opened my mind up even more. But, um, I mean, she raised us to, you know, to be gentlemen, you know, to, to act right, to behave yourself and carry yourself, you know, right. You know, like you got sense, I do give her that, Mm -hmm. um, However, I think me going through the stuff and then becoming a man, I look at it like, okay, because I have kids now, your expectations should have been high, right? And that's how I look at it now. And I try to put that on her. And, again, I just don't think, you know, people in Cabrini in that type of environment just didn't know any better. And, and, and we, we, you know, we, we building a better relationship, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know going from there. Any ch- any time that you can recall in that transition where you just said, you know what, I just want to give up. I just don't have it in me to move forward to 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 beat whatever is happening to me, the circumstances, all that. And was there a moment? And it sounds like you described that a little bit. That you said, um, I just couldn't. And I'm trying to pick your brain because it's fascinating how you made that decision. Describe that moment where you, you may, might have felt like you were failing or you'd already failed. Yeah, man, it was it was numerous of times, man, that like you know, after the fact my brother passed away, like like I said, man, everything was going so good for me at that time. Um I was like one of the top, you know, kids in my in my high school class in the city. I just had a good year my freshman year of junior college, now I'm being recruited by four or five different universities. I end up committing to my university on my birthday, I signed. So now I'm going into my sophomore year. My brother get killed. So now I'm going through all this, and and for me it was it, I just I it was people like Deepak that was in my ear. You know, you got to keep going, Greg. You got to keep going. Um, it's interesting you, know, you say co- that because one memory I have just crystal clear, and this is like you know. So I flew down from Texas for the funeral, for his brother's funeral. And then at, we went to the cemetery to bury him. And uh, at the very end, it was just like, there was four of us left. And everybody had kind of left. And I was like, well, Greg, you kind of got to make a decision right now, right? Like, are you going in or are you going out? And whatever the decision is, is up to you. But you need to make that decision right now. Yeah. And, and, and it, it, it was just, you know, People, like I said, people like Deepak, man, my my coaches, um, the older guys, the the you know the older guys who who grew up in my community, to just you know you got to keep going, Greg. You can't, you you got to keep going. It's gonna be hard. And I wasn't really trying to hear it at the time. I'm just like, man, I just lost my brother. The crazy thing, and no, no, a lot of people don't even know this. Is what I'm about to say, like the guy who who murdered my brother, like I knew him. I just shook his hand like a week before he killed my brother. So like I was really like pissed, mm-hmm. you know. Like I was mm-hmm. pissed. Like I was pissed. Like I was, I, I was willing to you know go do a a jersey number, football jersey number behind my brother. Mm-hmm. And 
I, like I said, man, I had people in my ear, like Deepak, my coaches, uh, my family, you know, just my whole community that, that supported me just like, you know, like, Greg, you got to keep going, man. You you got to. You got to go make Alex proud. And uh, that's what I did, man. Greg, I'm, I'm sorry you lost Alex. It sounds like you guys are really close. Yeah, we was, man. We were, we, man, like, Deepak, no, I couldn't go nowhere without him. You know, yeah, so uh, Raj, it's like so the difference is is like you and I, you know, and Cullen, we think of a sibling as a person who we are connected to because of like we grew up in the same house, right? Like those kids, their connection is yeah. like survival. Like they need each other to survive. This this brings me to my next question for both of you, Deepak. And and I am a suburban guy, you know, I have humble roots, um, in, but I was always raised in, and grown in the suburbs of Chicago. And the only time I was exposed, Greg, to Chicago was in undergrad and then, you know, then, uh, you know, college and then uh, medical school and then residency and, you know, and whatever. Um, Deepak, you couldn't be any more different in terms of what, at the time that you and Greg met, what your circumstances were in terms of like life, how your family structure was built, Greg, how yours was built. Um, can you speak to that a little bit, Greg? You, you, met, you, met, you meet Deepak in this, um, this organization where you choose him to mentor you. How do you look at his life at that time as you, know, you got to know him initially and, and over the next few weeks and compare and contrast it to yours? What are your, what are your thoughts at that time? Um. At that time, it was like it was different, right? Because um, the typical, the typical um, family in Cabrini, uh, the mom is single. That's the, that. That's average. That's what you see, right? Mm -hmm. In the projects, right? Mm -hmm. um, no father in the household, um, and the mom is raising the kids. Uh, you get a guy like Deepak who take me from that and bring me around his. You know, his family, I, I met his wife at the time, his mom, uh, his dad, his sister, uh, his, his close friends. So he kind of exposed me to a different lifestyle uh, that I wasn't used to. So that kind of like shifted my mindset at a, at, a, at a young age because I'm like, okay, he's not black. These people are not black. I know if they can live like this, I know I can. You did know you what I'm like, saying? Did you like what you and, saw? I did, man. Like, like I said, man. Like how he was living, you know, traveling, mm -hmm. you know, with, with with no worries. You know, it it was like, you know, he was free. You know, um, mm -hmm. he took me on my first plane. I never got on a plane until my freshman year of high school. He took me to Texas. Mm -hmm. Um, so just seeing that, man, it 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 sparked a fire for me to want to do the same thing. You know, when I have a family and when you know how to treat my, 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 my brother and how to treat my family and friends, you know? And, um, uh, mm -hmm. I think for me to get exposed for, at, to get exposed of that at an early age, it, it, it motivated me to, to want better, to, to want to do better and, and get out of my circumstances, you know, growing up in Cabrini. So I think that was, that was powerful, you know, and I appreciate Deepak for that. Deepak, what did you think? You've seen this young individual and, uh, you decide you want to do this mentorship program, you know, for whatever personal reasons you had at the time, if you want to go into it, what'd you think of his circumstance when you got to know Greg? Yeah. You know, for me, it was interesting. And it, funny thing, Colin, you remember probably meeting Greg when Greg was in elementary school. Mm -hmm. That's what's crazy about it. Yeah. So, I, I met him a couple of times and I always thought it was fascinating. Just as I think this is fascinating. I'm just listening and trying to learn because I'm putting myself in Greg's situation at 19. You know, you're just filled with testosterone. And I don't think it's hard for anyone to give in to hate at that age. And I don't know how he didn't. And obviously, he had father figures like yourself and other people in the community as coaches that, that helped him. Uh, so I'm just learning. Uh, and I can't help but think of our coach growing up, uh, Dave, who – was a mentor to us, you know? And I and think so, Cullen, it's so interesting you say that because I ultimately think when it all comes full circle, it's like, I feel like Greg's relationship in my life 
is like the next step of coach, what Coach Galladay gave to us. And I also think it's great that he's a coach. You're a coach, Greg, you know, and so you're a mentor to all sorts of kids. And, you know, if your kids are listening right now, they might not see that on a day-to-day basis where you're making them run and you're, you know, teaching them how to uh, play as a team, but yet you're the role model that it still shapes them. And that, you know, I'm sure they make fun of you. I'm sure you make fun of them. All these things are, are beautiful. Right. And so I'm just trying to learn and I, I'm pretty much in awe. So I'll stop talking. And then with, and with the coach, with the coaching situation, right? Like a lot of the kids that I coach, right. They from the West side, they from, you know, all over the city, you know, um, the, the kids in my program. So they can't bullshit me. I'm sorry. Can I curse? I'm sorry. Absolutely. You can curse. They, 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 they can't bullshit me because I've been through it. So it kind of, for me, it, 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 and for them, it, it sets the bar high, right? The expectation high. Mm-hmm. Like, the stuff that y'all going through or the, 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 the stuff that y'all try to, you know, think y'all going to slip the crack and just kind of get by, it ain't going to work because I, I, I've done that and done that. So I, when I explain this stuff to them, they, they understand, they realize, so they can't bullshit me over and that's why, you Mirage, know, the I reason gotta... they're going to love that is because I use that same stuff on Greg. Greg, I was so Absolutely. bad as a kid that Greg could never fool me. <laughs> well, this is... Yeah, this so, is gentlemen, yeah, this is... So, and, 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 yeah, ahead, and that's why they respect me so... And that's why they respect me so much, man. Well, this... Greg and Deepak, this leads me to my next question is... Greg, and this is a two-part question. Greg, did you ever feel like... Deepak was at any point or any of the mentors, but specifically Deepak, we're going to give up on you. And Greg, when you are coaching and mentoring so many young individuals, have you ever had to give up on somebody because it just, they just weren't going to transition and move forward. And, and if so, what, what were your last minute steps to try to avoid that, avoid giving up on somebody? Um, no, I never felt like Deepak. Um, I never would have gave up on me. I don't think he ever made me feel like that. Um, you know yeah. how he knows that I never give up on him, Raj? How's that? So, so, so when Greg was little, sometimes like when report cards would come out or he'd start running with a little bit of a goofy crew, he would start to disappear, which means he wouldn't show up to tutoring on Thursdays. Mm-hmm. And so one time he went like three weeks and didn't show up. And I kind of got pissed because I was like, dude, this is my time. And I don't mind working with other kids, but like, I'm here for Greg. Mm -hmm. So three weeks have passed and I'm like, all right, he's hiding from me for sure. So I'm like, I got to go get him. Right. And I knew what building he lived in, but I didn't actually know where he lived. So you got to imagine, what are they like 14 floors, Greg, the whites? 16. Uh, 16 16 floors. They were called the reds and the whites. The whites were the projects he lives in. And uh, so he lives on the 16th floor. So, I mean, this thing is set up like a machine, Raj. You walk in. I mm-hmm. literally, I parked down in front of the building. Mm-hmm. I called Liz Cullen, and I said, hey, I'm going up to Greg's house. If I don't come <laughs> back, that's the last person I was. Right? And it sounds weird, Raj, but you, like- No, but I you were never, serious. You were serious. Yeah, I was straight up. I had never walked in the projects before. I'd hung out out there outside with Greg, but I'd never gone inside. And I'm telling you, I parked my car, and you, you just get heart palpitations. I walk in the building. So what they do is, is they essentially control the elevators, right? And then you have to use the staircase. So that way- Wait, what do you mean they control the elevators? What does that mean? uh, Meaning, so like when a new person comes in the building, a lot of times they'll come in to like try to kill somebody else. Oh, wow. So in an effort for them to control the drugs and the traffic of the people, if they don't know you, they force you to take the stairs. And then what they do is they have people that are spotters on each set of the stairs and it's progressively harder to get up north of the building. Greg, you're gonna have to forgive me. I'm just like this little insulated suburban guy. I'm learning too. <laughs> oh, it's, so, it's so true, man. It's, it's so true, man. It's so true, man. You've probably so seen true. my reaction a billion times in, in your life. It's uh, so, okay. So you, you're, you, you're with trepidation. So I go in the building up. and they're like, they tell me you can't use elevators. You got to take the stairs, right? And so of course I'm like quasi heart palpitations. Yeah. And I say to them, hey, do you know where little Greg lives? And they're like, oh yeah, he lives on seven. So I go up there, I walk up, I go to the seventh floor. I kid you not, like, and it, Raj, this was just as shocking for me as it was 
for how normal it was. So I knock on the door and somebody opens the door and there's people doing drugs like right there in the living room. Right. And I was like, oh, I'm here to speak to Greg. And somebody ran back and he came out of one of the bedrooms. All the kids slept in the bed. Three of you guys slept in one room, right, Greg? Yeah, man, my brothers. And like, I'm talking about like all sharing a mattress, Raj, like one mattress. And so Greg comes out and I'm like, look, man, I'm like, you can't hide from me. I was like, no matter where you go, like, I'm going to find you. So like, just start showing up again and like, let's get through it. What's, what was your reaction right then and there, Greg? Oh man, I was shocked, man. I was I was shocked. I was shocked, man. I was like, this dude just came to to Cabrini to to uh at that time I didn't have a phone either. He bought me my first phone, right? He got me my first phone actually. Uh it was it was crazy, man. I, I, I couldn't do nothing but smile because I'm like he just came in the building. He just came all the way upstairs. See, cause and... I think Raj and Cullen, like you guys look at it as like going into a building in Chicago that's normal, right? And in, in Greg's understanding, he understand like, oh, like you got to take risks to come up here. Yeah, man, they probably thought Deepak was the police, right? Or oh, I did something and he's coming to like, you know, come and get me or something like that. Um, but after a while though, people started to see this black truck pull up and I come out and they knew that he was my mentor. So it became a norm like, okay, if we see this black truck, yeah, that great. was awesome too. When the when I had my black Tahoe and they finally knew who I was. Did you get some kind of protection be, because of it? Like you felt oh, you were almost protected? Would, Raj, you know what's crazy? They all come up and give you a high five. They wow. shake your hand. But otherwise, they just sit there by the building and like protect it. It's crazy. Uh, Greg, I uh, part of one of the side gigs I got is I uh, co-run a, 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 a used sneaker a charity called Sneaker Hearts. And we go to the South side and deliver shoes and they know us so well, they know our van. So when we go down there, we have, you know, gang members help protect us and where cops won't come to the schools and we'll be handing out, you know, shoes to people. So I have just oh, the, cool. the slightest, the slightest um, understanding of what that is. But what I'm hearing is just so foreign to me. Um, and to, to hear uh, from Deepak's standpoint, then to hear from your standpoint. So you get, so you get, Greg, back on track, Deepak, and you you guys have this ongoing mentorship. Why do you think, Greg, why do you think Deepak wanted to do this? Why, what was, you know, you're, you're, you're a gentleman that's got, you know, personal, you know, home struggles, uh, you're, you, but you're still optimistic about what you want to get out of life. And then this individual comes from the suburbs and says, I want to mentor somebody from this community. Why do you think he was there? What, what was your impression? Um, that's a good question, man. That's a great question. Um, I think, like I said, I, he, he says to me all the time, like, he never really had a little brother, you know, um, and we became so close. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we gravitated to each other and, mm -hmm. you know, he, he, he understood and he, he knew that he wanted what was best for me and what was best in my interest. So I think that's why he, you know, kept his foot on the, on the pedal for me. Um, and I needed that, you know, um, uh, I never ever disrespected him, cursed him out, you know, and he, and he was tough. Like he was tough to me, you know, I'm young and you got this, this Indian guy that's, that's, you know, talking, talking to me all aggressively and, you know, and I'm just like, you know, but I, I knew it was all love at the end of the day and he wanted me to be successful. So, uh, that's what it was. Deepak, do you ever think, do you ever worry that you push him too hard? Like, like you maybe didn't have a place to push him that hard. It sounds like you just spoke from the heart. And but did you yeah, ever? Yeah, like man. I mean, my thing is, is like you can't fool these kids, right? And if you show like that one iota of like fakeness or weakness or like pretend, it's like game over. Mm -hmm. So I, that my philosophy with Greg is, is like, because you know he's he kind of runs the same as me. He either is all in or he's all out. So I just needed to know at all times, like, I'm in this relationship if you're all in. Why did you need to do it, Deepak? What was, what was your gravitas? Man, I'll tell you, uh, I always say Greg's probably given me twice as much as I've ever given him. But, Can you say, um, yeah, speak to that. I think it's one of those things, man, where it's just like, it's the one example in my life where I was able to give somebody unconditional love with, in, with no expectations. 
unconditional love with no expectations, which would be unconditional love. Yeah. And you yeah. hadn't had that before, not with family, your own kids, your own wife, your, your, your own siblings. No. Cause I mean, you got to think when I met Greg, I got married in 2005. I met Greg in 2003. Oh yeah. You didn't. So, you know, yeah. I had never loved, I had never done something of my own I like, selflessly. I see. With unconditional love. It was always conditional, right? Like I'd like to get this or be better. Hopefully this will help me somehow. But it filled but some kind of void, like, right? It filled some kind yeah, of niche. He filled a huge void. He filled the void. I feel like I was working then and I was doing fairly well. Mm -hmm. But I just felt this emptiness in my heart of like doing good for, you know, like doing good for the world, doing good for myself, mm -hmm. just being a good person. And that, that's what filled that. Greg, as you mentor individuals now, do you have a, a set of ground rules, like a almost like a, a roadmap to how you want to bring these individuals up, how you want them to, you know, manifest themselves in the world? Do you have like, do you have a code of conduct, so to speak, for them? And for and yeah. how, tell me about that. Yeah, so I, I got rules in my program. Um, that, like, again, like I said, I got, I got expectations. Um, I'm going into my second season, right? Um, I got rules. I got expectations, right? And then how? Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of different. You got to kind of watch it with basketball because um, we kind of use basketball not just for basketball but for life also, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I tell my kids all the time, you can't have one, one foot on this side of the fence of, and another foot on this side of the fence. You're either gonna be all in with being a student athlete or you're not. We can be cool. We can be cool. I see you in the building. I can still help you. But when you play basketball and part of a, 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 a program, this is not a team. We're a program that I'm, I'm, I'm building. It's, you have to conduct yourself like a professional because you're not going to embarrass your family. You're not going to embarrass me. You're not going to embarrass this, this program. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like set that as the tone. Like you, you, you can't, you, 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 gotta, you, you gotta be all in. So it kind of forced them to like, okay, Coach Greg not playing. Uh, I know if I want to go to college and play ball and get a free education, this is what I got to do. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it, it kind of like, it, like, again, it's kind of hard to like, you know, pinpoint that, you know, with mentoring them because like I said, they know my expectations, my expectations are high and they know, you know, you know, what school and basketball can take them. So I don't bullshit them. I keep it real. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. You want to you want to have two two feet in. I mean, one feet in, one feet out. Okay, you're gonna end up getting caught with a, a, a with a group of guys that you you know you don't supposed to be with, and something's gonna happen to you. And I had two kids actually get shot in this last two in the last two years. So like, I kind of explain that to you know explain that explain it to to them. So um, it, I kind of leave it up to them to choose you know you know what's what's gonna be the outcome. Uh, and I just kind of lead by example. You know, um, this is what you need to be doing. This is what you need to not be doing, you know, stuff like that. That's amazing. Two two individuals who have gotten shot during your mentorship, your coaching, and you were still able to keep them on the right side. Is there a time when you have to pull the plug, Greg, and say, I can't coach you, I can't mentor you anymore? It's I mean, because you have responsibility, all, multiple people, many individuals. What's your line? What's what's the line in the sand? Um, I so I I give you an example, right? Um, a situation happened with a kid. Um, this kid was a sophomore. This happened this past season. Kid, you know, talented sophomore. I was starting him. Uh, he was a starter for my team. Um, uh, this kid just. Chasing girls, chasing girls. I called them like this week. I that week I had it was like our first conference game. I called them like five times in a hallway. So I ran them. I made them do suicides. Made them do stairs. Didn't work. Called them. Didn't work. Called them four times that week in class. So I'm like, okay, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bench him Friday game. It's a Friday. Everybody's coming to this game. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurt his feelings. So I start him. I take him out after a minute, then play him the rest of the game. Um, he was pissed. So we ended up losing that game. We played Walter Payton. We ended up losing to Walter Payton. Um, we should have beat him, right? So we in the locker room. We get in the locker room. 
And it was three of my starters that didn't play that game. So I kind of called all of them out, right? I called, I'm like, I got a kid named Greg. Greg, he one of the kids that got shot. I'm like, you know, you you being BSing in practice the day before, that's why your ass didn't play. Big Mike, you six seven. You know you 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 can't miss practice before a game. Mm-hmm. That's unacceptable. You not playing today. We could have used you today. Mm-hmm. And then I get to you 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 chasing girls. This gonna get you kicked off the team. Uh, he had a mind you. He had a big old hickey on his neck <laughs> that day. So I'm like, you got a hickey on your neck. That's unacceptable, man. Unacceptable. You you chasing girls. It's gonna get you kicked off my team. This kid go back and tell his dad what I said. So the dad comes to the school all like macho and he's like, Why are you telling my son he's chasing girls and, and and this and that? I'm like, look at his neck. It's true. So that right there, that's a line that like okay. I don't play. I don't play that. That's that's a line that's been drawn. Like I what we talk about and what we go through with with our program, we are family. This is your family. Um for you to put me in that situation and don't tell the full story on why I benched you, like that, that right there just kind of drew the line. So I, that was one of my, you know, my my turning points. Like I don't play that, so I kind of had to cut that team, that kid from my team. Yeah, you have to have consequences, right? Exactly. If you're gonna be successful. Exactly. And... exactly. Craig, how do you? So he was one of them kids. Like, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, he was just one of the kids where I feel like, you know, you know, cut the wire on because uh, we we got again we got expectations, mm-hmm. and with basketball, like you, it, it, it's certain stuff you can't you you can't do, you know. And um, yeah, man, he he, the dad, you know, this was the dad third time coming up there talking crazy to my coaching staff, to me and my coaching staff, and you know, you know, we got to be professional and, and handle it, you know, mm-hmm. in a professional way. Um, but I, 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 you know, gave the kid his papers, man, like you can transfer and go play somewhere else. And I'll be happy to either sign off on you to play anywhere else, but you cannot play, uh, for Roberto Clemente high school basketball team. As long as coach Greg is the coach, it's unacceptable. What, what percentage of these kids are ultimately going to play in the NBA ballpark? Um, I haven't gotten to that yet, man. I haven't, I haven't built the program up yet. But so, so to be, I definitely want that. But I, I got some kids that got the potential. Yeah. I got about eight kids on my team that got the potential to go play at the college level. Absolutely. So, so relatively, a, a, compared to all the people you'll coach, a small percentage will go on to play pro ball, right? Um, at this time, like we're talking like ten percent, maybe twenty percent, maybe less than that. Of all the kids you coach. Yeah, less than. 10. Less than I say about ten percent. It's a few kids I can see getting paid to go if they can stay with it and yeah. get better, get stronger. Right now, all the kids I didn't coach about ten percent. But you're. But is that the is that the best judge of success for you as a coach? I would think it's not. Like your success as a coach, yeah, it would be great if someone played in the NBA. It's it's even it's great if people get free ride to college and then they become successful men. It's also great if they don't go to college but they become successful men because of your role modelship. Right? And, and, that's my, and that's my point, Greg, is that the, the basketball is a sport. Sure, they can go on to do something professionally with it, but something you're giving them, this, this structure you're giving them, this code of conduct you're giving them is going to last with them, do you think, for the rest of their life? I think for the rest of their life. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. How again, do you think about that? Um, I, yeah, that, that's, that's true, man. And, and I tell them all the time, some of y'all are not going to play professional. Some of y'all are not going to go to college. But we gonna let we we gonna use basketball. We're not gonna let basketball use us. So I like that. Oh, we that's gonna great. we gonna we 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 gonna figure it out. You know we not you know some of y'all not gonna play at the college level. But what I'm you know teaching y'all and showing y'all, I got rules like for every for every minute that my players late to to school, they run for that. They run a lot for that. So if you're 30 minutes late to school, you're mm-hmm. gonna run 30 laps. You know, so they, 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 they didn't get it at first. It was like, I had just got the program last year. They didn't get it. They was like, man, coach Greg is hard. He, he, he strict. He do too much. That's the new, this generation. That's they, they, they knew saying, oh, he does too much. But now they know my expectations going into this summer 
uh, with, with spring lead, with, with summer lead we got coming up and going into next season. So the kids that I'm bringing back, they know the eighth graders that I got coming in, they mm-hmm. know the expectations and they know, you know, okay, coach Greg, th- th- this is what he's expecting of us. And, and, and this is the level he wants us to play at. And this is what we're going to do. Greg, you, you mentioned it right there. My next question was 2022 compared to say how Cullen and Deepak and I were raised relatively we had a lot of discipline. We had a lot of just, this is what you're going to do. We didn't have the opportunity to have opinions with our family, with our teachers. Uh, there was a lot of, um, it, it, I, I grew up in a, in a time of corporal punishment. You know, you get a spanking, you get, you know, smacked with a, with a spatula if you, you did something wrong. Here now we have to, you know, entertain everyone's thoughts and feelings and, you know, for better, for worse. I, I'm, I'm, I am amazed at how you navigate these waters and you're still able to offer discipline. And what I'm hearing is the structure and you're not a bullshitter. Clearly you're not a bullshitter. I know you said the words, but I can just tell that you're uh, some huge degree of your success is because you're just a straight shooter. How do you, how do you do that? How do you navigate 2022 with this kind of like world, but you know, generation Z millennial, whatever it is, what do you, what do you call it? Yeah, it's, it's definitely hard, man. It's, it's, it's hard, man. It's, it's definitely hard because this generation is, is – they it ain't gotten soft, right, versus when I was in high school. But um, I don't know, man. I just – I'm a straightforward guy, man. And um, I let the parents know what I'm about. The teachers know what I'm about. The kids know what I'm about. And if you got you got a choice. At the end of the day, you got a choice. You can go transfer and play somewhere else. Or you can stay here and and, and play for me and, mm-hmm. and learn and understand what I'm trying to do. It's bigger than basketball. Um, some of y'all going to be dead. Some of y'all going to have jobs. Uh, and and, and it, it's, it's going to be structure and discipline. And if you don't have that, you're not going to be successful. And and I, and I, and I kind of, like, shove that down their throats. Like, I give that to them, like, every day in practice, every day in practice. And, and they get it. They starting to get it, you know. They starting to get it. But it's definitely tough, man. It, it, with this generation, you gotta definitely take in consideration of, of people' feelings and 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 that kind of stuff. So, you know, like I said, but I just I, I stay true to me and what I believe in. And I, you know, you get parents that oh, I think my kids should be playing this. You never play a sport in your life. You don't. You don't. You're not in practice with us. You don't know how hard your kid is going in practice. So you know, I get that a lot, but. Like again, I'm a straightforward guy, you know, and and you know, I try to you know do what's best for the kid in our program. Greg, when when Greg Fleming sees and hears every weekend all of the deaths in Chicago, the young people murdering each other, what 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 does the voice in the back of your mind say is a solution or a possible solution to that from the formative aspect of these people that are hurting each other? Do you do you have that? Do you have a thought on that? Given what you, how you were raised, what you experienced, what you saw when you were growing up. Um, that's a good question. Because I mean, I can that's I can have an opinion, but I have no basis to understand it. Growing up the way I grew up, you know, and just getting my information from a TV box, you know, like what what's your perspective on that? Man, that's a good question, man. It's, that's a good question, man. I think. And I only can speak for the black community, right? I'm black, obviously, right? And the the this generation, man, it's really it is it, it's, it's not even the it's not even the kids. I think it's the it's society. Like like we just said, like we can't if a kid get a whooping, that kid can go call the police, call DCL, DCFS, mm-hmm. and get their parent in trouble. Mm-hmm. So I think society has created this. That's what I personally think. I think society has 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 brought this to light, like, and, and that's a problem. You know, that's a problem. I think, um, and a lot of these kids, man, they don't have their fathers in their life, man. They 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 see the shootings and they thinking it's cool. You know, everybody want to be a killer, mm-hmm. and it's, just, it's it's stupid at the end of the day, man. And I. What, like I said, man, these a lot of these kids angry, you know, but I still don't think um, that's an excuse, man. Um, it's a way, it's a way. I, I and I tell my my basketball kids that it's a way, it's a way we can figure it out. 
Um, if it's going to take five years, ten, it, it, we can figure it out on, on becoming successful. We can figure it out. Um, taking the easy way out, um, that's an excuse, you know. So, yeah, man, that's that that that's a good question. I no, I appreciate your perspective a lot. Uh, I'm and like Colin said earlier, I'm I'm just learning so much about you know a world that I never really paid too much attention Chicago, to. Chicago is it, it's crazy, man. It's, it's definitely crazy, man. It's gotten out of hand. Mm-hmm. It's gotten out of hand. It's definitely it's gotten out of hand. Deepak and, and Greg, is there uh, Deepak? Is there something that you you think about Greg, or you've never you haven't told Greg since you've known him that you can share with him about his success and his perseverance in life? Oh man, he knows he knows everything he needs to know. I'll tell you, I'll I'll just tell you this, uh, and I think this encap- encapsulates the whole relationship. So when Greg went to college for the first time, he was like, hey, man, I need to ride down there. So I was like, perfect. I'd load up the pickup truck and drive him down to Ohio. Uh, We unpacked into his dorm room. We went to Walmart. We bought a bunch of stuff. So my rule with Greg my whole life has always been, I won't give you cash, but I'll buy you anything you need. I'll never give you cash, but I'll buy you anything you need. So we went to Walmart and we just, I mean, we outfitted that dorm room. I think his sheets might have been softer than mine by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and Greg, also, the other funny thing is we went to Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I, you know, we did all that. And then I went and I dropped him off at mm-hmm. uh, administration. And, like, I'm telling you, man, I walked out of that room when I dropped him off and I was just crying. And I couldn't stop crying. And I went inside my truck and I was crying. And I called my wife and I was like, I don't know that I'll ever cry when I drop my own kids off at school because I had such a powerful experience with Greg. I, I remember how proud you've always been of Greg and, and your relationship with him. And it's really something special. I, I'm sure that I don't know if he understands that all the time, how proud you are, you know, because you probably don't let that on too much knowing you no man i do man I, I, and i man i tell people everybody who knows me knows him or know about him everybody like anyone who knows me um uh, who watched me grow up uh that's from cabrini mm-hmm. uh, who, or who, you know whoever you know met me along the way and been in my life they know they know of him you know um, and I think, like I said, man, he, he's been a big influence on my life. Um, I definitely don't think, you know, him exposing me to a different lifestyle and keeping me on that on that narrow road, I'll be where I'm at, man. Um, and also financially, man, um, he invested so much money into me, man. Uh, it's crazy. So, um, like, our relationship is 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 beyond man and like he's my family like i'm a part of his family i've seen all his kids grow up uh i've been to what three baptisms yeah you went to three um, of the five baptisms you know like you know so like i didn't take vacations with them all kind of stuff so it's you know it is it, it's, it's this relationship man um you know you don't get these type of relationships that that often and i'm blessed you know to going to be a part of my life you talk about an investment a financial investment Deepak are there many other financial investments that give you this much return oh no man I mean yeah not not even close not even close this is one of those things where to me I mean and I've said this to Cullen numerous Mm -hmm. times we're on vacation and things like that but it's like my relate if if I if I wiped was wiped off the face of the planet tomorrow mm-hmm. and I had no, and I had one thing to just think about, like, mm-hmm. you know, obviously like being married and mm-hmm. a husband and a father to some degrees, those relationships are self-serving because I'm rewarded constantly from the energy that I put in. But Greg's like the one imprint in my life. That's, you know, just a hundred percent was like love in and love out relationship. That's amazing. That's why I'm glad we're talking about mentorship. 
because it's it's such a s- small investment to big reward relatively when you really sit down and think about it. And this was a just a great opportunity to hear arguably one of the best mentorship stories I've ever heard in my life. Uh, Greg, I want to I want to kind of end with a couple things. Um, my last question to you, and Colin, you may have more questions. Is you know, advice is hard to hard to take and hard to give. But if you had to give advice to someone young in their formative aspects of their life who was struggling in an environment that prototypically wouldn't produce success, would have been a quote unquote product of the system. What is what is the best advice you can offer that person? Uh, if I was to tell uh, a young Greg who grew up like me right now. Yes. I would tell him, I would tell him or her, um, cut off all the people, cut off all your friends, cut off, not all your friends, but cut off people uh, that are not trying to be successful. Surround yourself with successful people, even if you're not even making the money that they're making, right? But you're going to eventually learn from them. So... And I and I apply that to to my life right now. Mm-hmm. I don't even hang out with people uh, that's not on my level. I don't think I'm better than no one. I don't think, you know, I don't come off like that. But if I can't learn from you, I'm not hanging out with you. Like that that's just that's just me. Um, if we can't, if I can't learn from you or you can't learn from me, um, we don't share the same common, you know. Uh, thoughts on me trying to become you know successful we can't hang out and Colin um, and it's think, interesting he says that because you know this you, whether Greg grew up in a totally different house different color skin but fundamentally you know one of your baselines of friendship is it's got to be a two-way street it and also reminds me good it oh, reminds no, I me of, of you, the, you are the top stuff. five people you hang around. Like you're a product of the top five people you hang around. That's a common saying Absolutely. you hear, Absolutely. but it's really true. And talking about peer pressure, that's how peer pressure works. Peer pressure isn't someone saying, hey, man, I really want you to do this bad thing. Mm-hmm. It's you see that the, your top four friends or your top five friends or people you hang around are doing something. You're just going to do it. That's so true. So, so true. If you can act actively think okay what is this person they don't have the ethics the virtue the courage that i want people around me to have you cut you you have to cut ties with them you don't have to do it cruelly you don't have to you know you don't don't have to be this big speech but you just got to hang around people that are going to improve you i think is that what you're saying absolutely man absolutely man i'm telling you to this day man like I see people from Cabrini, it's a what's up and keep it moving. Um, I just can't, man. I'm in a whole different lane now. Um, I want to one day be able to coach at the college level, and um, I got to keep my nose clean and and, and keep going moving forward. So I would tell like I would tell him or her that like, you know, surround yourself surround yourself with successful people, people that are successful. Um, Learn learn them, watch them. You know, read about them type of people. And and, and 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 open your mind, and, and, and you'll see the results in the end. Speaking of that, uh, Greg, anybody that you read or any books that you've read that made a big difference in your life? Um, so I, I I'm I'm like studying. I mean, I I am like I live by the principles and morals, but like I'm a Muslim, right? Um, and you know I I study you know the nation of Islam. Uh, Elijah Muhammad and, and Minister Louis Farrakhan. So I think those are like two of the most wise men ever, you know, especially black men. So I kind of like, you know, you know, watch a lot of them. But um, from a business standpoint, uh, I've been watching uh, Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, that's somebody I really like. And um, uh, I, I've been kind of like watching, you know, watching. I watch a lot of his videos. I do. Uh, mm-hmm. I definitely do. And um, I've been getting into um, Tesla guy. What's his name? Elon Musk, right? That's his name? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, me getting into this trucking, the trucking business, I want, a, I want a Tesla truck one day. I, I'm going to buy me a Tesla truck one day. 
uh, the new semi trucks that just came out. So that's 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 definitely something I want. But um, those two guys, um, I, I I I watch a lot. I study a lot. Those two guys. Man, Greg, your uh, your optimism and your your force is just it's intoxicating man just to hear your story and hear how you conduct yourself and just your passions and, and what your uh you know what your aspirations are just i i'm 43 years old i'm an er doc but i'm i'm just i want to go out and do something now just listen to your story you know i think that's awesome how do you uh well first of all who, who do you want to dedicate this time to um that's a good question man um uh, who would i want to dedicate this to man um I guess it's not fair to dedicate it to Deepak because he's sitting next to you. <laughs> but you can. <laughs> oh, no. He, he, he's definitely one of them, man. He's definitely one of them, man. Definitely one of them. But to the, to, to, to the people out there, man, that, that's trying to find themselves, man, just, just stay motivated. Stay motivated and, and have a purpose, a why. You know, you know what do you want to do? And, and, and go for it, man. Don't let no one you know, discourage you from your, your goals and dreams and just go out of it. I love it, man. That's awesome. That's absolutely perfect. Deepak, how would you want to end this? You know, it's kind of funny that uh, Greg used the word why, because, you know, a famous person said this, I probably can't remember their name right off the top of my head, but he said, uh, you have to have a why that can so big, it can overcome anyhow. And I, I feel like when Greg saw life on the other side of the jungle that he grew up in, I think he was like, that's the life I want. And once he locked in on it, there was no stopping him. And if I had to dedicate this to anybody, it'd be Coach Galladay, 100%. Yeah. I think the love and the love, beatings, wisdom, harsh brutality that he uh, reprimanded us with you know, gave us clarity upon which to pass that on to other young people. I love it. Well, thank you to you both for coming on, especially Greg. Uh, we really appreciate you being yeah, on thank here. you, Greg. It's such and, an honor uh, to meet you. Yeah, before we uh, go, is there, is there anything else you want to, you want to say before we, we stop this, Greg? Oh, uh, no, man. I appreciate you guys for having me, man. Uh, Deepak again, man, I can't thank you enough. Um, for what you've done for me, you know, and, and installing those principles and morals for me, you know, in me, um, to be the, the young man I am. I give him a lot of credit. And he was like, "No, you did it." And I'm like, "Yeah, I did it, but you, you, you gave me a, a outlet. Man, it was an outlet for me, especially coming from where I come from. Um, and when I, you know, when I used to be at school, people would be like." They think or assume, like, you know, I go with both parents because how I conducted myself and how I act and how I carry myself. And I'm like, I'm from Cabrini, Cabrini Green Projects. And they look it up and they're like, Greg, you was from Cabrini, dude. Like, how you doing? And, and you know, so, um, but yeah, man, I, I appreciate you guys for having me. And again, Deepak, um, you know, for being that, that guy in my life, man, that helped me become, you know, and, and help me become. Well, and the nice thing about yeah. it, guys, is like we're we're only in the second quarter. We still we, right. we still got a lot He's, more. A lot I, more I am so excited. Play. I'm so excited to see the rest of Greg's success. Yeah, Greg, I, I can promise you one day he will coach in college. Oh, I have and no, I have at some no level, possibly even the NBA. It's really just a matter of where he wants to land, where he can impact the most hearts. And Greg, we do have more than four listeners actually, <laughs> and uh, That's I'm sure not they're true. gonna. I'm sure they're going to be asking some questions. So we'd love to have you back. Love on to have you back because there's going to be a question Q and A. And and speaking of that, Greg, you know, historically, you know, Cole and I, you know, in the entrepreneurial spirit, we want to share our podcast with with everybody to to move the production forward. However, in this particular case, please share this with anybody and everybody you think would benefit. And I think so many people would benefit from hearing this dialogue tonight. Uh, from a personal standpoint, you might save a life, you might save a life literally and figuratively, uh, professionally and spiritually by just hearing your story and your mentorship story. 
Uh, I cannot stress that enough. Share it along. Oh, and, and that was subliminal advertising by Raj. That's right. That's right. For five <laughs> for five ninety nine for five ninety nine a month, y'all can. Oh, uh, Deep Park keep Deep, Deep Park keep trying to get me on. Deep Park keep trying to get me on ESPN. I'm like, dude, I'm like what, ESPN. Like this is story, bro. Like, like I would love go, Greg. One day, more. one day ESPN is gonna do a story about Greg. You just, Greg, you just gotta, gotta get someone from ESPN to listen to this. Well, Greg, story, I could, man. I would love to connect you with CNN, man. I do some, I did some work for CNN during COVID. I would love to connect you with some, you know, some, some of those writers and some of those producers, man. I, I love this. Man, story. I approve. I approve. Whatever y'all trying to do, man. Uh, well, uh, I, post it. I approve. Y'all can post it wherever y'all want to post it. Y'all can write about it. I approve all that, man. I approve. And Raj, you know, this is, we probably won't even put this in here, but the, at some point, even offline or whatever, just on the phone, you got to hear about his AAU team, dude. It is like the who's yes. who. What, yes. what grade is it, Greg? Fifth and sixth grade. Okay, you undefeated for how long? Like, tell him about your AAU team real quick. It's legit, dude. It's sick. Well, how about this? Oh, yeah, yeah man. I got, I got, I got, yeah, I got ahead, some go of like I got some of the best I got some of the best fifth and sixth graders in the state, man. Uh we went on a run last I'll say from last May, last May of last year. We didn't lose a game from May. We went on like a six month game six month win. Like we we won, we probably end up winning like eleven tournaments in a row. Roster was just we, raw. Yeah, my I, I got Ben Gordon's son on my team. Uh, who else? I got a uh, Rob Simeon head coach, Derek Rose, them coach son on my team. I have uh, uh, this kid from uh, he's like from like Plainfield. This kid named Cole, just a stud. I I I got a I got a, I got a few people. Um, the head coach at Perspectives High School, Anthony Davis High School, his son is on my team. Um, I just got um, this kid. Uh, his dad used to produce for R. Kelly. He's on my team, and he just like he told me the other day. He's like, man, you're the truth. You're the truth. <laughs> and um, <laughs> but yeah, man, it, it's 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 and, and they see what I'm about, man. And they 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 know I know what it's gonna take to get to that next level. So. You know, it, it 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 was crazy, man. We we everybody in the city, you know, was calling me trying to play on my team. Like parents were like, "I want my kid to come play," and I'm like, "I ain't even having trials no time soon because we were that good, right?" And we went like six months without losing a game. So we ended up winning like eleven tournaments, and we went like twenty three and 0, 24 and oh, something like that. And we were just we were blowing people out, like blowing teams out, blowing the doors off of. Them. And I'm just like. It got to the point where, like, I had to show, like, birth certificates. I, uh, they, you know, they, 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 they yeah, like, just, like, these kids are in, they, at that time, they were in fourth grade. So, we were fourth and fifth grade. We just went to sixth, fifth and sixth this year. But they, they were good, man. Like, and we good, man. We got a, I got a nice, nice team. And hopefully, they all come play for me at the high school level. <laughs> I got a real, I got a real good eighth grade class coming in also. Uh, my brother, I speak on him a lot. Deepak, no, Deepak, I haven't seen him play yet, but he's one of the top eighth graders in the state right now, and he's coming to Clemente. That's gonna be awesome. You're gonna be coaching your, your little brother. That's so cool. And I plan on starting him on varsity next year. He got the talent. Unless he talks back to you, then you're benching him. <laughs> oh man, he 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 knows. He knows. He, I, I tell him all the time. You, you you gonna get the same treatment as as if you one of the regular kids on the team, you know. So and he knows he know the expectation, um, and and he's with it, man. He's ready. They locked in. Well, that's that's awesome. I I vote we keep all this in in the episode. And uh, but Greg, listen, man, it has been a pleasure and an honor talking to you tonight, man. And I I we can't wait to have you back on again, Deepak. As always, man. Thank you for uh, your mentorship to me. There's no doubt. You and Cullen have mentored oh. me in ongoing mentorship. That I, I have great humility when I say that to you both. Um, Greg, I'll tell well, you these, these mutual, two guys. It's mutual, man. Yeah, right, man. guys. With that, that, everybody, thanks for hey, listening. Colin. To hey, Colin, can you, can, hey, Colin, can you still believe? Like, I still can't believe it. Like, I'm 27 years old now, and Deep Park still haven't shown me how to trade. That's a fool. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Like, I'm 27 years old, and he still <laughs> would not give me the call. 
you will not give me the songs, call it. That's oh, crazy. man. Yeah. Uh, I'll pass them on to you when he gets me That's right. Tip. That's right. All right, guys. It's, 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 it's been, it's been, right, a, man. It's been a pleasure. It. We'll talk to you real soon. All right.